In 790s Norway, a Viking town headed by a powerful leader thrives despite their dwindling resources. However, the arrival of a man from Rome and the presence of neighboring tribes threatened to endanger the townsfolk's once peaceful lives. A longship carrying Vikings, slaves, treasures, and livestock sails in the middle of the river toward their homeland. Arvid, the chieftain second in command, informs everyone that they're almost to their destination, the town of Norheim. Suddenly, Rufus, an arrogant Roman slave, complains about not being given water for 12 hours. Arvid tries to calm his anger by telling him they'll be given a drink upon reaching their destination. Elsewhere, Kark, a slave, is tasked to assist a group of elderly men to the high cliff side near a waterfall for the Atestup, a ritual in which the elderly jump from high ground to prevent burdening the village in their old age. Bjorn, the oldest of the men, decides to go first, deeming it an honor. He shouts, to Valhalla and jumps off the edge. Everyone then rushes to see his splattered remains at the bottom of the waterfall. On the ship, Arvid patiently relays what the slaves should expect in their new lives at Norheim. Rufus voices his complaint about the lack of information being relayed, unaware that he is about to be a slave. Having had enough of his annoying attitude, Arvid signals the chieftain Olaf. The imposing man slowly walks up to the Roman and punches him on the nose, and Rufus immediately protests his mistreatment. Olaf returns to his post and asks his right-hand man if what he did was too much, to which Arvid answers that he did what a leader's supposed to do. However, Olaf believes his actions are built on a fear-based leadership style, instead of what's right. Later, Arvid confesses his loneliness at home, being the only one without any property or a family, and how pathetic he thinks he is, especially since his sole possessions are the clothes on his back and a tent. To help his friend out, Olaf devises a crazy plan to get Arvid what he wants. Meanwhile, after witnessing Bjorn's horrifying fate, the elderly men back out of the ritual, reasoning that they're not even that old. They tell Kark they've chosen exile instead, so the slave lets them go, but tells them to stay away from the town. Afterward, the slave returns to Norheim, a lively town where the adults work and the children play. He enters an enormous hall where Orm, the chieftain's younger brother, sits on the throw knitting. In Olaf's absence, Orm's appointed as the acting chieftain. Orm asks if Kark has finished his task with the elderly men, and the slave gives a vague answer, assuring the acting chieftain the men won't be returning to town anymore. Then Hildur, Olaf's wife, enters the hall and berates Orm for doing a poor job as acting chieftain. She pushes him to do better as heir to the throne, but the man reasons that it isn't his dream. Exasperated, the chieftain's wife insists that Orm should make an offering to Odin for the safe return of the Viking warriors, and suggests sacrificing some slaves. Tired of dealing with a headstrong woman, Orm allows her to do whatever she pleases. She has Kark follow her outside, where she nonchalantly chops two slaves' heads off one by one, while praying to Odin. When it's Kark's turn, he cheekily tells the woman that sacrificing too much might make their gods angry. However, Hildur chides the slave for being too opinionated about her decision, so Kark defeatedly lays his head down on the stump. Suddenly, someone announces that a boat has arrived. Knowing his life has been spared, the slave tells Hildur to remember that sacrificing two slaves was enough. The warriors, one by one, pack the loot and drag the slaves to town while Olaf, Arvid, and Freya are welcomed by the townsfolk. Receiving a warm embrace, Olaf lifts his wife as they twirl around, while Orm awkwardly tries to hug his wife Freya who avoids him in disgust. The man whispers that she at least pretend to accept his welcome so as not to embarrass him. Orm then turns his attention to his brother, greeting and asking him about his extraordinary adventure. Arvid tells him that their many memorable moments are too fantastical to say. Orm says he'd like to join their next adventure if his back feels better. Changing the topic, Olaf tells Orm that he must be proud of his wife Freya, who enthusiastically participated in their pillaging. He adds that the warrior woman forced herself on the monks, to her poor husband's disbelief. Freya tells him he'll understand how the real world works if he ever joins them in battle. As they walk to toward the Great Hall, Orm asks if they'll be at the party tonight, and if they'd like to swing by his place for a drink. However, they decline Orm's offer, wanting to reminisce about their adventure despite just arriving. Orm offers to bring his own chair into the warrior-exclusive meeting, 
but the others make up excuses to deny him. Elsewhere, Rufus is pushed around by a Viking when he asks if he can get his cloak back from the person who took it. The slave sees the warrior and demands his cape back. However, the Viking rudely denies Rufus, so the aggravated slave points out that he's wearing it the wrong way. Seeing the slave's retaliatory response, the Viking shoves his hand down his pants, then places an axe to Rufus's throat before pressing his soiled digit in the slave's mouth, teaching him a lesson. After releasing Rufus, the men laugh in delight. Suddenly, Kark, who's being branded with a hot iron, cheerfully asks Rufus if he's new in town. He tells the confused man that he was supposed to be sacrificed today. Later, Later, Kark informs him that they're straw mates and guides him to the barn. Rufus incredulously asks if this is where they'll be sleeping, and Kark enthusiastically affirms. Meanwhile, Freya prepares for the party, as her husband asks if she'd like to stay for some mead. The woman declines his invitation when he suddenly notices her necklace. Freya explains it's a souvenir she fashioned from the monk's cut-off members, and proudly shows it to her appalled husband. As the party begins, everyone gathers around for the celebration of the warrior's safe return. Olaf announces that they've finally found a land where they can gather supplies and no longer suffer from starvation, despite the acting chieftain's poor management. Olaf's words elicit a guffaw from the crowd, mocking Orm, who quietly drinks in the corner. Meanwhile, Arvid waits for the chieftain's signal to make a move. Arvid then walks toward a couple, Olvar and Liv. The warrior greets the woman calling her Milady, stating that it's how they address beautiful women in the West, flattering Liv. Suspicious, Olvar asks what Arvid needs from them. Then, the warrior nervously asks if the married man still has the largest farm in Norheim, which the man confirms. Then, Arvid challenges the rich man to a home gang, shocking Olvar but delighting his wife. Home gang is a duel between combatants for property, treasures, and lovers, and whoever wins takes the loser's possessions. Upon hearing the challenge, the Vikings in the Great Hall fall quiet to listen to the intense conversation. However, the wealthy man refuses to take part, as he knows the right hand of the chieftain has no belongings. Yet the prosperous farmer has no choice, because Arvid officially declared his challenge, which the Viking warriors acknowledge with loud cheers. The following day, Liv finds her husband hiding in a nearby cabin. She warns her that he'll be an outcast and dishonor her name if he doesn't show up. Out of fear, he tells his wife that he has no chance of winning since Arvid is a great warrior who's already slain many men. Not wanting Olvar to back out, Liv convinces him that he must think outside the box in order to win which encourages her husband. Later, Olvar meets a mysterious man in the forest and pays for a smidge of poison on his sword's tip. The man says it's one of the most poisonous substances in all the land, adding to the wealthy farmer's confidence. Just as the home gang begins, the people gather round and cheer for Arvid. As the two challengers stand in the circle, waiting for the event to start, Olaf offers up the eventual loser to Odin. Then, Olvar asks if he can make an announcement, which the chieftain allows. The wealthy farmer arrogantly berates the warrior and says that he'll regret challenging him. As the chieftain starts the home gang, Arvid quickly slices the overconfident farmer in half, eliciting cheers from the crowd. The victorious warrior hugs his friend and his new wife, Liv. To celebrate, Arvid gives Liv an awkward kiss before they happily head to their new home. The following day, Rufus dreams of being served by beautiful Roman women as they feed him food and pour him wine. However, the slave's dream becomes a living nightmare when he awakens to two Viking warriors peeing into his open mouth. Disgusted, the slave washes his mouth and face with water. Kark asks what he's doing, so he explains what happened. To Rufus' surprise, Kark doesn't think the nauseating experience was too bad. Elsewhere, Arvid has difficulty adjusting to his new life, as Liv points out his poor management of the farmstead. Liv even belittles Arvid's lovemaking skills, and notes that his only experience with women is when he's pillaging villages and forcing women against their will. His wife also scolds him that his incapability in managing the ranch is embarrassing, leading the warrior to walk away with his bow and arrow, despite Liv calling him back in anger. Out in the open field, the warrior practices archery, targeting the sandbags and pulling the bowstrings ready to release. When Liv distracts him, he accidentally sends the arrow up in the air. Meanwhile, Kark and two other slaves talk about the older man's impending freedom after his long service to the Viking. Vikings. The elder speaks proudly of his keen observation skills and great eyesight. Then, the older man sees something from a distance and describes the objects headed their way. All of a sudden, Arvid's two stray arrows hit his eyes. As the older man screams in agony, his companions remove the arrows and unfortunately take the elder's eyeballs with them. 
Later, Clark returns to town, where he sees the Roman slave. Rufus is shocked to see the other slave returning from the woods unsupervised, and asks why Clark didn't escape. To Rufus' surprise, Clark explains that he's a slave by choice, believing it's much better to stay institutionalized in Norheim than having to fend for himself in the wilderness. The following day, Rufus places a decoy body under his covers, and clumsily tiptoes around to escape the Vikings. He hides under a cart pulled by two other slaves and goes unnoticed despite his legs sticking out and dragging on the ground. After entering the forest, he makes a run for freedom. Meanwhile, Olaf wakes up in annoyance due to the coldness of his room. The chieftain angrily tells the guards to find the slave who neglected tending to his fireplace. The two Vikings search for the slave, but come up empty-handed and report him missing. Olaf orders his commanders to gather and find Rufus's trail. Suddenly, Liv appears to remind her husband of a prior appointment with her friends Ansgar and Lund to discuss poetry, prohibiting him from joining the mini-raid. Arvid argues that he's needed by the chieftain, so Liv asks, asks if Olaf really needs her husband to hunt one slave. Intimidated by the woman, Olaf says they can continue without his right-hand man. Liv reasons that he needs to get to know some of her friends to work as a couple, causing the moping man to follow his wife. In the woods, the Vikings finally track Rufus on the north side of the forest. Meanwhile, a bored Arvid listens to Orm reciting his dragon poetry. However, his wife and her friend are enamored by the man's majestic tale, even showing off their goosebumps. Orm asks if the warrior has any ballad he'd like to share. After much encouragement from the crowd, Arvid recites a crude poem about his experiences pillaging and taking advantage of women, to the audience's horror. To help out the warrior, Orm tries to teach the Viking how to create a poem, which Arvid admits he can't understand. Liv callously remarks that her husband's head doesn't contain any creativity. Elsewhere, after Rufus traverses the woods, he comes upon the woodsman tribe, whom he asks for help. Exhausted, the slave explains how he's been mistreated by the Vikings. The woman comforts him and offers warm food and a nice bed. The naive man thanks the woman and follows her, but he's suddenly hit on the head rendering him unconscious. Later, the slaves wake up tied to a wooden pole with animal skulls. He sees that the woodsmen have gathered around, praying to Odin and offering him as a sacrifice. The slave tries to convince them he can't die because he's a valuable artist who knows the noblest of stage arts, which is magic. Intrigued, the people listen to his words. Unaware, the Vikings have arrived at their campsite, observing by the tree line. The Roman slave performs his magic and mime act, eliciting amazement from the simple-minded woodsmen and the hidden Viking warriors. Olaf deems the slave is more valuable than he initially thought, and commands his men to snatch the slave back. Soon, the Vikings announce themselves, and Rufus is overcome with fear. The woodsman leader takes a punch to the stomach, and asks Olaf who he is and why they're there, to which the chieftain says he's come to take back what's his, pointing at Rufus. Typically, the chieftain would slay the man, but thanks to him, Olaf realized his slave's value and decides to just take one of the man's ears, and the chieftain warns him never to steal from him again. Meanwhile, after growing tired of Luan's snide remarks, Arvid punches the woman and leaves to rejoin the other warriors, despite his wife's orders for him to apologize. Soon, Arvid joins Olaf and Freya upon their return, and the woman comments on his lateness and how he's spending too much time bending to his wife's whims. Olaf says Arvid shouldn't let Liv change him, and he should stand up for himself. Arvid reasons he wants his marriage to work out. Trying to be supportive, the chieftain hugs his right-hand man, comforting him. Later, Arvid returns home only to discover that Liv has locked him out. He apologizes, but the woman denies him entry to the house. Meanwhile, Rufus is buried neck deep in the ground as punishment for escaping. When a child approaches, he asks the boy to dig him out, but instead gets hit by a wooden shovel to the head. The following day, Orm visits the slave and introduces himself as the chieftain's brother. The Viking is curious about Rufus's abilities, which are magic tricks and pantomime. As the two exchange ideas, Orm listens to the slave's tale about being an actor and his liberated life in Rome. The Viking fantasizes about such a life and remarks that they have a profound connection with each other, which Rufus calls chemistry. Meanwhile, Olaf goes to relieve himself by the trees when he notices someone lurking nearby. Convinced it's Orm, he scolds his brother. All of a sudden, the woodsman leader appears and stabs the chieftain repeatedly before walking away. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.